Good to be in the house of God this morning. We hope and pray things are well with you as we always say. I want to try and continue from last Sunday. I'm going to use a, a different uh, maybe thought, but continue on with the Bible lesson that we had, amen, last week, last Sunday. Because it's such an important, I think, issue uh, for the church today. And I'm always trying to, I'm trying to look for ways to explain sometimes what I'm trying to get across. I hope that I'm doing it in a good way uh, or in a way that people can understand. But as we get started this morning, there's a lot of people out there that's listening to us that have never, I don't think they've ever really stopped to just think about what they're doing and how they're, how they're living their life. Today I want to focus, now we, we talked a lot last Sunday about the church, the first church, the early church. And I want to continue on that, but I'm going to, I've picked out a man, Stephen, that we're going to be dealing with this morning. Amen. Lord, if we can, and I think I was going to leave the thought with you today is, where are the Stephens? today. We need them. What we're, especially in my position as seeing the way I, I travel sometimes and I see all sorts of things going on, but even, even right here, where are the Stevens? There's not a whole lot spoken of in the, there is a, it's a lot in one sense, in another sense, it's not. Stephen he came on the scene like out of nowhere and in about two chapters or so, that was it. He died. They killed him. Amen. But the short little window, if I can use that, that we get of Stephen, my Lord, what a man. And I want to say this as we get started. Stephen wasn't one of the apostles, he was a disciple. Well, what is a disciple? Most everybody, and I wanted to, I looked a little deeper, tried to find out all I can uh, on this. Uh, to a lot of people, and, and they're right, a, uh, a disciple is just a, a follower of Christ. And we've taught that, we've brought that out. But looking at this a little further and looking at some other ways it's defined, amen. I'm going to read this to you. It says, uh, a disciple, one of the definitions of it, is one who accepts and, now notice this, it's adding this on there, one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Oh, that, that describes Stephen perfectly. He not only was a disciple, a follower, he was a follower, a disciple, but he also assisted in preaching and teaching the Word of God everywhere he went. And it kind of goes along with what I've said before. You don't have to be, now everybody listen to this, you don't have to be a licensed minister to be a Stephen. Do you hear me? I've said this a year or two ago, all, the, all of you brethren, if you're in the church and you're repented, you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, amen, we are uh, followers of Christ or a disciple. Well, there's different kinds I'm learning and beginning to realize here. There's different kinds of disciples. There are disciples that are just followers. But then we've got men like Steve, Stephen. That's not only a follower, but a helper. He assists in whatever he's asked to do. Amen. So we're going to look at Stephen for a little while. We're going to start in the book of Acts, chapter 6, and verse 1. Where are the Stephens? today. I would like to see more and more Stevens 
in 2022 in Portage, Indiana. Amen. Now, if you remember, before we start reading, last week we, we covered several things here in Acts. And um, we mentioned there in, in from chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, right on through. But we got up to here. I want to start here this morning. You know, uh, in the latter part of, of 5, there it's, it was talking about if God, you know, he was warning them. Because they, they had in their mind to do some bad things to the disciples, the apostles. Amen? Well, this one man got them told him, say, you better think twice. It's a little late for some, I'm going to throw this in there. It's a little late for some preachers today that have sat in the church of Jesus Christ, amen, and run down God's ministers, plan against them, amen, they're already in a, in a position where they're going to have to answer to God for that. And there's nothing I can do or you can do that can change that. The only possible one that could change it would be those that are guilty. That, like these men in the fifth chapter. Amen. And old Gamal, I think it was his name, he, got, he said, I won't tell you now. <laughs> you might want to, in our, in our terminology, you might want to think twice before you do what you've got in your mind to do to these preachers, these these. Apostles, amen. Because you go against them, you're going against God. He told them that. And I don't think a lot of preachers today are, are waking up and realizing when you go against the truth, when you go against them that God has called and put in that position, you're going against God. Amen. It's kind of like when uh, when they were dividing up everything and all of that. Oh, uh, Ananias is fire with them. They, they brought their offering in. Amen. And said, well, that's what uh, they've got and all that. Well, you know, they kind of lied. They were deceiving. And old Peter said, now, you didn't lie to me. You lied to God. See, a lot of preachers need to wake up and they realize, now, wait a minute, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you believe this, what are you doing with it? Amen. So in chapter 6, pray for me this morning. Where are the Stephens today? And in those days when the number of the disciples, amen, was multiplied. Not the apostles now, the, the disciples. Was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians. And I've noticed a couple of places in here where they had problems with them, this group of people. <laughs> we'll get into that another day. Against the, the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve, amen, the twelve, the apostles, called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look you out among you Seven men of honest report, listen to this now, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves, amen, continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And it goes on and names a few that they picked. I'm going to stop here for a minute, church. I thought it, I kept thinking about this as I was studying over that this week, amen, that how they didn't know when they chose these seven men, and especially Stephen, kind of stands out among the other ones. I'm not taking anything away from the other ones, but Stephen was something else. Stephen, I, I'm wondering, you know, when they look at, and this is, of course, me, uh, uh, the fleshly part probably that thinking like this man Stephen would have been good out there with the apostles but see God knew what was good for Stephen and where Stephen would be the would be used the best and then when you read the story of Stephen you find you say well now I can see now amen they chose Stephen a man full of faith now, he's not a licensed minister, as we would say today, or he was not one of the apostles, but what a man 
he was. He wasn't just an, a, a disciple. He was a disciple that assist, not only believed and followed, but assisted. He believed this 100%. And you'll find this out as we get into this. Listen. Verse 6. Whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed over, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. Even prayed over them, and more or less uh, appointed them for this job, this position, which some pre preachers today would probably be upset. Well, I want to be an apostle. I want to be this. Why don't you just be what God wants you to be and let it go at that? Can we all say amen? amen? There's probably a lot of preachers out there today that's listening, amen, to what I'm saying and what they really need to do. They need to sit back down and be like Stephen. Instead of wanting to be this or wanting to be that or have a license for this or license, recognize for this, just be like Stephen. Do what you've been appointed to do or called to do or asked to do. Can you say amen? amen. Now look what God did with this man. Look how God used this man. But a lot of preachers out there in the world today, that's why I'm saying we need, we need more Stephens in the church today, in the body of Christ. Instead of preachers that just want to be uh, want a name for themselves, want to be uplifted, want to be recognized all the time. Come on, church. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples now multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. So these disciples, my Lord, look what's going on. The, the apostles, and they're preaching and teaching the word of God. Look what they're doing. Look how many people they're getting stirred up. Amen? And it said, even a great company of the priests. Wouldn't it be nice to get some priests today in this world that's calling themselves priests? We know that there is no New Testament priest. Jesus Christ is the great high priest. Amen? But there's men out there still wanting to be titled or have the title of being a priest. And they go to school for it and they, they buy their little collars that's turned around backwards so they can be noticed and all. See, that's the problem with the world today. We don't need priests. Amen. We need either, we need good men filled with the Holy Ghost and faith and wisdom. Well, we'll get to that here in a little bit. Lord, help me. There's things sometimes you want to say and you wonder whether you should say them or not. The word of God increased and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and great, a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, now listen, and Stephen, full of faith and power. See, remember we said last week in Acts 1 and 8, he said, you shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I believe that should be happening today. Everybody that gets the Holy Ghost, receives the Holy Ghost, are filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Should have power in their life. They shouldn't be sitting over in a corner crying all the time. Now, we all get down. We all weep. I'm not against that. But there's just some people that's never happy. They're never, amen, seem like on the mountain. There's nothing wrong with being down in the valley sometime, church, but don't live down there. My God, when you're down there on the mountain, pray and seek God and read and get your faith built up and get back up on the mountain because that's where you're going to be a blessing and help people. Can you say amen? A lot of preachers, amen, a lot of, and I know I'm always talking about preachers, but, you know, I'm a preacher. I'm not perfect. Well, they're not all perfect either. And some are worse shaped than others. Come on. My Lord. Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. See, now we're getting a better understanding of why he was chosen as one of the seven. To stay behind while the, uh, the, 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 the apostles are on out there. They just keep on preaching. Preaching. They didn't want to leave the Word of God to serve tables, they said. Well, thank God old Stephen is doing more than just serving tables. 
Amen. He's out there doing what he's called to do, but he's preaching and teaching the Word of God. He is a man that is full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. Got power in him. Amen. He didn't get offended and say, well, why am I over here doing this? Why am I over here doing that? I could have been doing this, and I think I'd have been better than this apostle or that apostle, or I could have been one of the apostles. No, he didn't do that, church. He took the position that, and see, the Bible teaches us, and I, Lord knows, I wish we could get a lot of the preachers out there today. We've got too many chiefs and not enough Indians, seem like, as we often say. Everybody wants to be the preacher. Everybody wants to be a pastor. Everybody wants to be this. Well, leave it alone and be what God calls you to be. Not what you calling yourself or your mother's called you to be. And you'll do a whole lot more work for God in what God calls you to do than what you're out there trying to do on your own. And there's a lot of them out there preaching today that don't need to be preaching. They need to be set down and preached to. They don't even know what the truth is, seem like today. Amen. There arose certain of the synagogue, listen to this now, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. He's not an apostle. He's not one of these great, he was just a man full of faith. See, men in our church today, the men in the church today, if you're full of the Holy Ghost, you've got power. Let it, let it work in you. Let it, let it do the, some of the things. I know everybody can't be Stephen, but my Lord, we can get a little bit closer. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, now listen, to which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and the Cyrenians, if I'm pronouncing these right, Alexandrians and, and them of Cilicia and, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. Disputing. Going against him. Arguing with him. I've had that problem myself. And I'm not even close to this man. I'm just a little preacher in a local church. But even in that position, people come against you. They know more than you know, and they might do it. But what are they doing with what they know, and how are they using what they know? That's where the big difference comes in. I'm satisfied with just trying to do what God has called me to do. Amen. Now listen, there arose certain other synagogue. Synagogue. That's one of these other churches, places of worship, I should say, today, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, the Cyrenians, and the Alexandrians, and them of Cilicia, and of Asia. And he said, disputing with Stephen. Well, now most of you would know this. If you don't, you'll know what time we get done here. They picked the wrong man to dispute. <laughs> How many of you would agree? They picked the wrong man, church. They, the best thing they, they could have done was leave that man alone. But they went up against a man of God. They went up, not the disciples, I mean apostles, but they went up one of God's followers. And they didn't just go up to an ordinary man in the church. They went up against Stephen. A man full of faith and power. And they paid the price. Amen. Listen to what happened. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. <laughs> they weren't able. They went up against a man here, a man that knew more than they knew had more power than they ever thought they had. See, all the power and authority that these people had, and you're going to find out here in a little bit, I think, that this was a council, amen, but this is the same council that had Peter and Paul over there a while ago, and we've seen what happened to there. Amen. I'll tell you, these preachers today that's going against God's word and resisting the truth when it's presented to them, you're heading for trouble. Well, I've been this way for this many years. Well, that's all right. But when truth comes your way and you resist it and fight against it and talk about 
amen, the men, amen, that's bringing it to you, you're in trouble with God. Amen. Listen. They were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. They just couldn't do nothing with him. Then they subordinated men. In other words, they hired some men to lie on him. There's been lies told about me. And I say all the time, the Bible says not to receive the accusation against the minister. Except to be under two or three witnesses. I'm talking about people that have seen it. Knows it. No, people today can just hear a rumor and he's marked. Well, they're going to stand before God one day. That's all I can say. Nothing we can do to change it. They'll just have to stand before God and say, why did you do that? You took hearsay. You took gossip. And you tagged that man. You spoke of things against Brother J.J. there. That, should never, that wasn't true. But you, you heard it from some evil person and you passed it on and then you've given him a bad name. Oh, they'll stand before God. How many people, amen, that you told that to about him, and I'm just using you, now will never listen to him, will never have any faith in him because of the seed these evildoers planted in their mind. Don't even sit there and think you're going to get by with that friend because you won't. They support men which said, we've heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Think about that. They went out and hired, if we can use that word, people that would say things about him so that these people would lose faith in Stephen. And Stephen is a, a, a man that is full of faith and power that loves God, that's born again of water and the Spirit, that, and that is trying to do a work for God. And they're lying, as you're saying, they're lying like a dog on him. It's sad. Well, they picked the wrong man. And I think there's a lot of preachers out there today, they done picked the wrong man many times that they're talking about and running down. I don't believe that. Whispering to somebody here, did you hear what he said? My God. And it goes on, verse 12, and they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. Remember I told you about the council? Well, old Peter and John was brought before and the others back there in the earlier chapters. <laughs> brought them before the council. Well, I'm going to say it again. They brought the wrong man this time again before the council. This man knows what he's talking about. This man's got power. And this man has got boldness like the others. Today you've got people in the church, somebody says something bad about them, but you don't see them in church for two weeks or a month. What kind of Stephen is that? Yeah, I said that. Well, so and so didn't shake my hand. They didn't. They didn't really greet me. Like, what if? What is your problem? Why don't you grow up and be try try to get close, preacher? Remember one time somebody went to a conference and, hey Amen. Actually, some went to a conference here, just to be very plain, and was in one of our general conferences, and and they overheard people talking about Bishop Spence, Bishop Spence, and they enjoyed Bishop Spence's message that he preached. And I'm not saying that for me, I'm just saying this to make a point. Man, it offended, when they got home, it offended the pastor. And he even made a statement, some of them, well, they don't call me Bishop. Where's, why, nobody recognizes me like that. Well, that's probably why they're not. Because of your attitude. Amen. I don't ask to be called Bishop Spence or Spence. As the old saying is, I don't care what you call me, just don't call me late for supper. 
Yeah, he got all bent out of shape because they're bragging about how they enjoyed the conference and the Bible study. Bishop Spence brought this out. Well, he got a little upset over that, I guess. Well, you know what? Tough. Grow up, preacher. And I, I'll be frank with you. With an attitude like that, he don't even need to be pastor in the church. They stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. They picked the wrong man and set up false witnesses which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. That's a lie. You know what Stephen is doing? You know what them preachers out there today ought to be doing? They ought to be preaching and fulfilling the law instead of out there trying to tell people the law has been done away with. The law is not done away with. We're fulfilling the law today. Hallelujah. No, all they're preaching, they want a, they want a crowd and they want the offering. That's right. That's all they're looking for. They're looking for a big offering. Shame on you. Shame on you, church. Them. Not on you. Set up false witnesses which said, This man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For they heard him say, Now listen, that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered. See, all they got on their mind is Moses. Moses, Moses. He's preaching and teaching and fulfilling the things that Moses taught and setting it right in the church today, the body of Christ that started just a couple chapters ago. Amen? But they don't want to change. They don't want to accept what Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. They don't want to preach that message. Now they know they've got enough sense they can't preach against Peter but they can sure change his wording a little bit and confuse the people or deceive the people. Amen? And not take a chance on making everybody upset. So they'll go ahead and, oh, that's a lot of oneness people. Oh, Acts 2.30. Oh, yeah. I, well, they, they say they believe it. They say they stand for it. But they will not preach it the way he did. Steve would get up and tell them just exactly the way it was. A lot of them preachers out there today that's listening to me won't do it. As much as I, and I'm not putting any pen, bowls, or whatever you want to call it on me, I'm just simply asking a question. I have preached the name of Jesus Christ on this, on YouTube for a long time now. I'm just wondering how many preachers will get up, don't even mention, you don't have to mention my name or anything about me. But how many has changed and start preaching Jesus Christ? You can't help but wonder that, can you? Because we bring it right out of the Bible. Peter preached the truth. Stephen was preaching the truth. What happened to Peter and Paul and them when they were brought before the council and the early church and thrown in the lion's den and all these other type of things? They preached the truth. You'd be surprised so many people don't want to hear the truth today. They want you to preach peace, prosperity. They want you to preach and have a good old Holy Ghost time. Well, what they're calling a Holy Ghost time, and I didn't mean to get on this again today, but what, what their Holy Ghost time is, everybody's shouting, everybody's screaming and hollering, but don't preach Jesus Christ. Preach Jesus' name. My God, we love you, preacher. Preach Jesus Christ. They'll turn you into Stephen. Amen. We've heard, we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs. In other words, the you know, 
all of the doctrine, if you want to put it that way, the teachings that Moses laid out under the law. Well, he was teaching that you come out from under the law into the new covenant church. But they didn't word it like that. They're deceiving the people. They want them to keep following them instead of following Stephen. And all, now listen, and all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. There he sat, brought him before the council. Did he get nervous? Did he back down? Did he say, I better change the way I'm going to word this because I'll make everybody in here mad. Or I'm going to run half the church out. That's what preachers today are doing. They're afraid. They're afraid. Preachers listening to me this morning, you're afraid to preach the truth that you know in your heart is right. It's written. But you won't preach it because you may not get another revival there. Or they might get you get rid of you as a pastor and get somebody in there that'll preach the name of Jesus Christ. You're afraid of that. We've had preachers say, Well, I see that, but if I preach that, I'd lose half my congregation. Well, first of all, friend, it's not your congregation. It's God's. And if you lose half of them, apparently you didn't need them to start with. Because you're just, apparently you've been just from preaching what they want to hear to keep them there. That's not Stephen. You can run around the church and you can holler and you can put all these, Bishop Lee used to call it filler words in there all you want because you don't have anything else to say. It's rather just get down and study the word of God and bring it out. You can do all that if you want. But one day you're going to stand on the judgment, at the judgment. And all that sat in the council looked, looking steadfastly on him. They brought him right in there and set him down. I think a lot of preachers out there today, they need to be brought in... <laughs> Wherever, whoever they're hooked up with or fellowship with or whatever, they need to be brought in and sit down if they had anybody that, that the council has to be right first though. Can you say amen? And set them before and say, what are you preaching? Why are you saying the things you're saying? Now, go into verse seven, or chapter 7. You see, church, Again, Stephen wasn't just, uh, whatever I'm asked to do. I'm gonna, no, this man was excited. He believed this. He lived it. He was earnest about it, sincere about it. Nothing is going to stop him. I don't care where you put me watching tables, you put me out there in the front line, I'm going to stand for Jesus Christ. We need that today in 2022. I'm not worried about the biggest crowd. We like crowds, but if we don't have them, I'm still going to preach the truth. I'm not going to change the word to get more people. Amen. Verse 1 of chapter 7. Then said the high priest. So there they got him before the council, and we can figure out real easy, the high priest is there. Did the high priest sway Stephen? No. Nothing's going to sway Stephen. You can bring me before this counselor, or you can bring me before that counselor, or you can bring me before all of them at once. Jesus Christ is still God. And you're going to have to come out from under the law and fulfill the law and get into the church by being born again of water and spirit. That's what Stephen's going to tell them. Yeah. Preachers today, I tell you, church, you got too many preachers. They and I put it like this: they're they're scared, scared preachers. God does not need scared preachers. He needs bold preachers. 
He needs preachers that don't care if they walk out. And I mean that in the right way. Walk out because they don't want the truth. Amen. Not, not walk out because they don't agree with you. Walk out because they don't agree with the Bible. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? Ask Stephen straight out. Is this true, Stephen? <laughs> they done asked the wrong man. <laughs> Church, listen to this. And he said, see, Stephen now finally gets a chance to talk. And I guarantee you that when he got done, a lot of them saying, I wish we hadn't brought him in here. But it's too late. They done brought him in, made the accusations, and they asked him, is this true? And let him have the floor, so to speak. Well, he took it. <laughs> Why don't preachers today, when they get a chance to get in the pulpit, why don't they take the chance say, I've got a chance to preach the truth. I'm not here to appease them and make them like me, make them ask me back. I'm not here to make sure they give good in the offering. I'm here to preach. Lord, Lord, he got up and preached. He said, Men and brethren, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia and before he dwelt in Sharan and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country from thy kindred and come into the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land of Chaldeans and dwelt in Char Charan. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into his, into his land wherein you now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot in on. See, today people want, well, what, are we, what do I get? What are you going to give me? Always looking for something. Abraham is just looking to obey God. Can you say amen? Yeah. Promise that he would give it to him for, an, for possession and to his seed after him when as yet he had no child. See, God, he knew, Abraham church knew that God has got his promise. He's looking for the promise of God. We need people today to get in the church and look for the promise of God. The promise that came down uh, on the day of Pentecost where he said that this promise is unto you, to your children, to all that's far off, even as many of the Lord our God is your call. That's the promise people need. Not the promise is, well, I, I want them to like me. I want them to ask me to come back. Verse 5. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a procession and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. You know, Abraham, he went out not even knowing where he was going. Didn't even have any children this time. But see, He's still listening to God. And God spake on this wise, on this wise that, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. Well, it happened. And the nation to whom they shall be in, in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that, it says, shall they come forth and serve me in this place? See, God's calling things that are not as though they were. Did you know that God can call things in your life that's not happening? You haven't even maybe thought about, but God can call things, call things in your life 
Amen. That's not happened, but it will happen. But people today, you got to have faith like Abraham to believe God's going to take care of me. Whatever God calls me into, He's going to see me out of it. Whatever God puts me puts on me, I can handle it. No, we don't have that today. Everybody's looking for a way out. They're always looking up ahead. Where is this going to take me? Where is this going to lead me? What is this going to do to me? Just preach the truth. Leave the rest of it up to the Lord. It's what Stephen's doing. It's what Abraham did. Peter, John, it's what Daniel did. Whether our God deliver us or not, okay, we're not going to serve you. See, that's a true follower. Today, everybody wants all the little, the little ducks in the roll, so to speak. They want everything just laid out where I don't have to have any faith. I don't have to worry about this because I didn't see that I'll be taken care of. My God, you're supposed to be knowing that by faith. By faith. Nobody wants to have faith. Then you wonder why a lot of people don't want to have faith. Well, the Bible says faith comes by hearing. Well, no people wants to hear today. They want to hear what they want to hear. We, if you want faith, you need to you need to get to where you want is everybody listening and out there. You want to hear what God is saying to you, not what you want to hear, not what you've been taught, not what you think or feel. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Come on, saints. And when you hear what God has to say, it's not always, bless your heart. You're so good. I love you so much. I'm never going to let anything bad happen to you. There's never going to be no trials and no tribulations come your way. Your house is going to have a, the Holy Ghost just dwelling over it 24-7. Wake up. You're in dreamland. Stephen wasn't looking for all. He was just, I'm going to obey God. Peter, Paul, James, and John, I'm going to obey God. Daniel, Jeremiah, and Isaac, I'm, I'm going to obey God. Whatever comes my way, it just comes my way. Anybody here say amen? Preachers? I'm always saying preachers, but that includes pastors, evangelists, bishops. You know that word bishop, I don't need to be called bishop all the time. I've never asked anybody to call me bishop. Have I ever asked any of you to call me bishop? No. You can call me whatever, just as long as it's a good name. <laughs> Brother. We might, we might exclude Spence, because that's spoken of in a derogatory way. That's right. Truth's the truth. If you don't like it, if you don't like me missing it, well, maybe you shouldn't have said it. I didn't get it started, you did. <laughs> Help me, Lord. My, my, my. And the nation, verse 7, the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God, and after, after that they shall come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave, listen, he gave him the, and he gave him the, the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarch, man, see what Stephen's doing, church? When he got the little, just a little opportunity to what we would say today, got in to get in the pulpit. They gave him a little bit of space there, Brother Glenn, to get up. Did, did you say these things? Well, he got up and he started preaching. Look how far. He goes all the way back to Abraham, telling them where they, what they've done, how they've treated, and the, tr the truth, so to speak. Bringing it right up to the present. 
I guarantee you if the truth was known, a lot of them were sitting there squirming in their seats, and we should have never asked that question of him. We should have never allowed him a chance to get up and say anything because he's condemning every single one of them, and he wasn't afraid to do it. Amen. And the patriarchs moved, listen now, verse 9. After all the and the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. That's one of the verses we used in our message many years ago. But God. All through the Bible, they are trying to do something against God's people, God's man. But God had something else in store. They don't realize it, church, but God had something else in store for Stephen. Stephen may not have been on the scene for a long time, but Brother J.J., the time that he was here, he set a lot of people straight. And he let them know just exactly what they had done and what God was doing. Yeah, they stoned him. We don't run out of time. Old Saul was standing there when they stoned him consenting unto his death. But later that man got saved. He got full of the Holy Ghost and power. Come on, church. Preachers today need, there's a lot of preachers, I, I, I don't know any other way of saying it, that's out there, amen, in the pulpit, week after week, and they need to get saved. They need to get saved. Like Stephen did. And then like Saul did. Like Peter did. There's people out there, preachers, pastors, whatever. They're probably hollering around the same thing that, amen, old Peter did. I'll never deny him. The well, Lord said, you, before the cock crows tonight, you'll be denying me three times. See, he wasn't saved. He was following. He, he was listening. He thought he was okay. Just like a lot of people today, they think they're okay. God said, you'll deny me three times before the cock crows. And he did. When they brought him before the, before the people, amen, and put it right up there to the, to the wall, so to speak, old Peter said, I don't know him. I'm not one of them. I mean, preachers today would just get up and forth. So I'll tell you right now, I believe this. I believe it. No, because they don't want to turn the congregation against them. So. My Lord. Eight. He gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begat Isaac, and I, and I, I'm sorry, begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarch moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. You all know the story of that, don't you? Now, why did they sell Joseph? Why were the patriarchs so jealous, it's the best word, I guess, angry at Joseph? Because uh, Joseph, God was dealing with that man. And God showed that man things and dreams and, and all that. And he, they, he would tell his family. And it irritated them. They found a, one day they found a, they had a plan. We'll get rid of him. Well, they tried. And thought for a while they succeeded. But God was with him. Why, well, Gamal told him, so "You better watch what you're doing to these men." Uh, what did What did the Bible say there? They beat him. There in the fifth chapter, he said, "But it, if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Lest haply you be found even to fight against God." He told them. What did they do? And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, 
What, what possessed them to think they had to beat them before they let them go? Their hatred. There's people, church, they don't want to hear you tell them the truth. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus. Remember, I told you last week, I think it was, the name of Jesus, that's the only place I know in the Bible where that's a term like that. But look, see, a lot of people, well, right there it is in the scripture. Well, you unlearned man, why don't you find out who said it like that? Why don't you find out the circumstances that it was set under? These are the ones that's coming against God and his preachers. This is the one that's beating, beating the apostles. Yeah, they, they did say, speak the name of Jesus, no more. I think I said last week, they wasn't, they wasn't preaching the name of Jesus. They were preaching Jesus Christ. And you can get mad all you want. Prove me wrong. Sit there and grit your teeth all you want. Squirm in your seat all you want. Turn on me all you want. But, 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 but why don't you just show me where I'm wrong? Back to chapter 7. And delivered him out of, listen, verse 10. And delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. <laughs> Can you just imagine? They dig a pit, throw him in it. <laughs> Did all these things to try to get people to think he's dead. Look what God did. God brought him out of the pit. Back up in the normal room. Then got him down into Egypt. And then in Egypt he rose up. To like second in command. <laughs> See that's what God can do. What were, what were the patriarchs doing at this particular time? They were taking him down. God's lifting him up. God is still God today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Then the Bible says, when he got down there, there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan. And great affliction. And our fathers found no stuff. That, man, you talk about a, a famine and a drought, I should say. It hit old Egypt. You know, there's a drought going on out there in the religious world. Dry as a bone. It's a grave full of dead men's bones. Dry. No life. I don't want to be in that church. I'd rather be a few... Be happy in God, have the truth, suffer some persecution along the way, be lied on, talked about, ridiculed. One day God will say, come up here there. Or enter in, thou good and faithful servant. I want to hear that one day. Lord, Lord. Twelve. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent, he sent out for his father first. The very one. Yes. Just think about that. Sent out our fathers. And at the second time, now listen, at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. I'm not going to try to read the whole story, but he said, Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred. And if you know the story, he disguised himself, and you know, because of the position, and he's wanting to see. He's testing the waters, if you can. When they finally realized who that was, they wept. Joseph was wet. He wept. See, Joseph not holding grudges. 
people today, I tell you, I think sometimes the worst people in the world hold grudges is what they call Christians. That's right, church people. Seems like today you get church, you get you get somebody mad at you in church. They're mad for twenty years. I don't remember what Clarence said about me. Instead of, you know, he was right. I need to change that. Joseph still loved his family. Still looking out for what's right and for the truth. What few minutes I've got left? Sure, there's a lot more. I might, I might bring some more on this and later on in the next chapters. We'll see next week or so. What a little time we got left. It's come to my mind earlier this morning when I was in the office. I like to remind everybody, church, and I want you all to listen to this. There is a place called hell. The Bible talks about a man that lifted his eyes up being in torments. Now you can think what you want, make up things in your mind, what's going to happen, well, I think this. I'm going to tell you something. If you're not right with God, we're going to go to hell. Brother Randall, if that's not true, we're wasting our time here today. You've got to get right with God. Are you right with God? Do you honestly believe this truth that we teach and preach? Or are you just doing it because you're raised in it? The scriptures are written, church. It's written. God. What did that man, the rich man, do down there? God trying to tell us something there. Man, he, he would like to have just a drop of water. <laughs> Amen. He wanted him to go. Man, he would like to went back and tell my brothers, my family, you don't want to come to this place. We try to tell our family sometimes, you don't want to come to this place or you don't want to go to hell. I preached on that years ago. You don't want to go to hell. I don't care who you are out there. You don't. I don't want you to go to hell. That's why every Sunday we're trying to teach and preach and get it out of everywhere we can. The truth. The original doctrine. I'm going to try. I've talked to Brother John and we'll talk to the others. We're going to try and change some way the format that we've got laid out. I want, to, I want them to understand what we're trying to do. There is the original and there is the new doctrine. I believe you've got to be saved Born again of one of the Spirit by Acts 2.38, exactly the way it's written. I don't think we can paraphrase it. Quickly allude to it. No, it's got to be spoken and preached to and told to be. What shall we do? Repent. And then we've got to tell them what repentance is. Repentance is more than saying, I'm sorry. A lot of people say they're sorry every single day. But they're not sorry because they keep doing it. So you've got to stop doing what you've been doing. Stop living the way you've been living. And stop preaching what you've been preaching. And start preaching exactly what is written. And I will 
plainly say, if you don't preach it the way the Bible said it, you're not going to get saved. I'm not the judge. I'm just telling you that's what the Bible says. Why is it in there? Men and brethren, what shall we do? You got to repent. What does that mean? You got to change the way you, you got to change your whole life. Some people, they'll stop drinking, maybe. Some don't even do that, but most everybody here does. I don't. But they'll stop drinking and cursing and think, well, they did it. No, friend, there's a whole lot more than just stop drinking. Stop cursing. You got to start, you got to, you got to stop the way you live your life. You got to stop a lot of them worldly places you've been going and participating in. You got to change your dress code. You don't want to change your dress code? You got a problem. You don't want to come to church every time you can? You got a problem. Amen. Repent means repent. Your looks has to change. I'm taking these last few minutes to bring this in. You don't want to wind up like this council did and others. They picked on the wrong. See, we've got to get it back, church, to where people pick on, you picked on the wrong church. You went against the wrong group of people. And we've lost that. I guarantee you when Ananias and Sapphira dropped dead in their tracks, I'm just saying maybe, because we don't know. The Bible says that everything that was done and said was written. Books couldn't contain it. So I'm thinking in my mind when that happened, See, a lot of them people said, don't lie to him. <laughs> How many of you believe that? Whatever, they, some guy must have looked over his wife and said, we get in there, don't lie. Maybe the wife looked at the husband and said, well, now look, husband, you, you, you have a tendency to stretch the truth a little bit. But we're going in here right now. You look at them two. Don't do that today. <laughs> I'm serious. God did them things to wake people up. But people's not getting woke up. Preachers getting in the pulpit. Preaching on this Jesus name, Jesus name, in the name of Jesus, all through the service, never once mentioned the name of Jesus Christ or tell them actually what the scriptures actually said. And then at the ending, they said, Now I've told you the truth. You're lying. You're lying, preacher. You didn't tell them the truth. You told them your doctrine, your organization's doctrine, your family doctrine. You didn't tell them. The Bible says there in Acts, if you remember the first week, amen, the Bible says after Peter got done and telling them all of this, amen, he said, the Bible says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and breaking of bread. They continued steadfastly, honestly, sincerely, with all they had. That's why old Stephen was over there, man. He just told them what it was, what they do. They stoned him to death. Stoned him to death. A great man. A good man. Full of the Holy Ghost. And these religious people took him out there and stoned him to death. And Saul, standing over there like a wimp, that's right, consenting unto his death. Preacher, you're consenting to all this stuff. You're in the same shape old Saul was in. Yeah. Yes, thank God Saul, amen, got a hold of God on his way to Damascus. Thank God Saul finally got reached by the word and repented and got right with God. Well, will you? 
Will you preacher? Will you pastor? Will you bishop? Finally somewhere are you going to wake up and repent of your sins? And change that false doctrine? And quit telling people I've told you the truth. You're lying. You didn't tell them the truth. Jesus' name is not truth. Amen. And all these other things are bringing into the church. and that, that worldly dress code you're hearing to, that's not the truth. You're lying if you say you told them the truth. I'm not mad, I'm just stirred up this morning. We don't need preachers out there just preaching. We need Stevens out there that'll just tell them like it is. The Bible says, church, we'll get into this next Sunday. A couple more minutes. You can go ahead and get the kids if you'd like. I think I mentioned it or touched on it last Sunday. The Bible says they, these, the early church, see, we were talking about the early church and how it acted, how it lived, how it preached, how the preachers preached and the people received it. Well, we touched on it. The first message, man, there was 3,000 people got saved. 3,000. Isn't that amazing? That's after the 120. Approximately 120. Then the Bible says that there was another 5,000 later. Man, that thing's moving. See, that tells us that when you preach, now, some televangelists or prosperity preacher out there days and these big revivals they hold in the summer 15,000 people got saved well you're lying they don't even know what true repentance means they wasn't baptized most of them wasn't even baptized and the ones that were most likely wasn't baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and you're getting up there and saying so many got saved you lied you lied lying preacher Amen. Am I telling you the truth? Nobody wants to say it. Nobody wants to talk about it. Acknowledge it. But this world, look at this world. It is a mess. But you've got places of worship on every corner. And all them preachers, supposed to be preachers, they're all upstanding telling people, I'm preaching the truth. I'm preaching your line. You, you're not preaching the truth if you don't preach exactly what Peter preached and the early church. You're lying if you say you did. And the only exception I would give to that rule is if you want to say, well, I didn't know any better. Well, then you've done it in ignorance. But even ignorance has to be repented of once you come to the light. Amen? Amen? You see these children? Thank God for them. We're trying to plant the right seed in their minds. But I'm trying to plant the right seed in your all's mind. Amen. It's amazing today what people believe in. Listen to another def definition of a disciple. A pupil or follower of a teacher or school. A true disciple is not just a student or a learner, but a follower. One who applies what he has learned. That's what we need today. Oh, I believe it. Well, why don't you apply it into your life? Why don't you get out here and teach and preach it? Well, I'm not a preacher. Every disciple, every follower of Christ can present the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you're waiting for, I don't have one with me, but if you're waiting for a little piece of paper that says you're a called, ordained preacher, quit worrying about it. I have one, I get one every single year 
How long have I been in? How long have I been preaching? Huh? How many? Forty, almost forty. I was thinking forty. And ever since I, you know, I've got them. I don't even know where they're all at. Some of them probably I could never find them. And it's not that I don't respect or appreciate that license that I have, have been given. But that's, that doesn't mean a whole lot, church. You don't need that. The only reason we have that is for the state of Indiana. And that fellowship card to get into a hospital. I don't need that to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You got preachers out there today, I think all they're trying to do is get another another license to hang on their wall. Yeah, I'm ordained. I got I've been ordained and so on. Uh, won't you sit down a while? Just sit down. 